And as the day passed in here in Bali, I could just observe that I was feeling more and more overwhelmed. And I, I was feeling also uh, really off. I was feeling lonely. I was feeling completely cut off from my, my mission and my destiny. For the last few nights, I had had dreams of real timelines that I usually never dream about. And so all of that was really starting to ring the alarm in my, in my field. It's like there's something that's really going on here. Bonjour, I am Sandrine, the founder and leader of the Golden Age Spiritual Ministry. Together, we learn about the embodiment of our multidimensionality so we can reclaim our full sovereignty in this beautiful reality. My High Council and I are happy to welcome you into our movement of spiritual revolution. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new transmissions. Thank you for liking, commenting below and sharing this video. Show us your love. Welcome to this transmission. I am here sharing for the beautiful land of Bali. I am now back in Ubud and I've had so many downloads and light bulbs that I really wanted to share with you. I thought that you could find that interesting. So today it is the 20th of March as I record this and tomorrow it will be the equinox. It is also the day before Silent Day. So here in Bali on the 22nd is Niepi, which is Silent Day and it's observed by everyone. So the airport is closed. No one is allowed outside of their home. You cannot turn on electricity or at least you cannot see lights from outside. And it's like a moment where people are encouraged to go in prayers, in meditation, just to spend time with their family, to stay at home. So uh, I'm still looking for an accommodation where I can uh, enjoy that, that um, beautiful uh, day of silence myself. And um, before that day, before Niepi, there is this tradition that's apparently quite recent here in Bali. It's maybe like 60, 70 years old. Uh, you have all of these teenage boys that build for weeks onwards and they build these gigantic puppets. And these puppets, they, re they represent demons, entities, like monsters. They are pretty impressive. And some of them can, can apparently go up to like 10 meters tall. I've seen many already as they're getting ready in the streets at the moment. I have to admit, it is really amazing work of art, really well done and pretty scary too. And they also create all of this music. And I have heard this music for days onwards as I was first in Ubud because I was near this temple place where all of these uh, teenage boy, they practice. And basically it's like them creating all of that. And it's pretty this music can sound very um, dis dis dissonant, dissonant to my ears to start with because it's like bang, 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 and it's very, very loud and, and very bizarre. And the more I, I listened to it night after night, it was just, just happening near where I was staying back then, the more I could really feel the energy of it. It's like really you feel darkness, like this demonic coming, and then you have the, the like metallic sound chasing them. And so I can only imagine what the procession would be like uh, tomorrow evening in everywhere in Bali, every village will have their own they on uh, festivities around that when they do, they, you know, they bring all of that in the street and people celebrate. And it is the intention is apparently to chase uh, entities and demons of the land. And it can also represent um, a clearing for themselves, you know, removing that from themselves. And for the last few days, the um, different temples have opened the portals of clarification and purification. So as I was traveling from Lovina, the north of the island, all the way to Ubud, we were stopped a couple of times to allow this procession um, to go on and it's beautiful you can see all of these the these beautiful Balinese people dressed in uh, these cultural clothes full of colors or all in white and they look amazing and they carry these beautiful little umbrellas and incense and just they, they walk down the street and it's mesmerizingly beautiful and they go to temple and do all of these ceremonies and it is really to clear and purify and so first of all, from a cultural perspective, I find it absolutely amazing. You know, I had no idea that it was happening and that I would, I would be here during that celebration. And I'm like, great, you know, I'm, I'm here at a very specific, important time of the year in Bali. And I'm just so grateful that, you know, destiny put me here like that when I didn't know that was going to happen. 
And as the day passed in here in Bali, I could just observe that I was feeling more and more overwhelmed by, you know, like I live in New Zealand and I'm most of the time by myself by the beach and there's not many people, you know, it's like one of the country, there's like a lot of space, not many people. And I'm just always in my own space. So here there's just so many people, you know, traffic everywhere, people everywhere, all of these things going on. And it's both amazing. Absolutely love it. And nothing wrong with that, but it's also for me, I'm not used to it. But then over the last few days, I would say even weeks, I could just feel that, you know, more and more was happening energetically. And yesterday I had all of these downloads as I had massive intent, he massive intent headache yesterday. Like I hadn't had a headache like that in, I can't even remember last time I had a headache like that. <laughs> Maybe I had COVID uh, a year ago. And um, I just, you know, I had to take some, you know, paracetamol and lie down. And then I decided to do um, an activation with Kayara. And I did, the, I, I started playing this activation because I just, I just was feeling so bad I couldn't do anything. And I, I was feeling also uh, really off. I was feeling lonely. I was feeling completely cut off from my, my mission and my destiny. For the last few nights, I had had dreams of real old timelines that I usually never dream about. And so all of that was really starting to ring the alarm in my, in my field. It's like there's something that's really going on here. Because in those dreams, I would just be like back in New Zealand looking for a 3D job, completely defeated, thinking that all of the spiritual work I do is like, Oh, there's no way I can live from it. You know, I'm just going to be in scarcity. Who am I kidding? This is crazy. This is nonsense. And so in these dreams, I was really like experiencing this lower timeline. And I would wake up and really vividly remember these dreams. I was like, what on earth is going on? Like, I do not want that. You know, I haven't considered having a 3D job in over three years. So I thought that once and for all, all of these timelines are closed. So I was very, very surprised that this could even come in my field during dream state which dream state is always, you know, exploring our multidimensionality. So it means that these timelines are present in my field. And I was like, no, thank you very much. <laughs> I know why I'm here and I know what I want to be doing. But also during the day, because of these dreams and because I was feeling so off, I could just feel that the clear streamlined connection with my destiny was blurry it was off i could just not feel it so strongly in my heart it was really fizzled and i'm like sandrine what is going on what is going on and i was really humbled by the experience it's like there is a lot shifting energetically i surrender to the divine i know everything happens for a reason um let's not be too alarmed because i don't get alarmed i don't get dramatic in these places when i i'm in these places of i would we would say that down or low, I'm not uh, completely lost and low ever anymore because I practice what I teach, which is residing at the center point of my fractal, placing as myself as the angel behind my human and observing my human's associations and my human's uh, emotions, my human belief system, my human exploring different timeline. And so as I observed that, I was like, oh, human centering is really going through something here. What is it? What is it? What is it? And yesterday I had all of this information flow through. So as I started the activation with Kayara straight away, I felt lots of entities in the room, entities everywhere in the room, demons even, which are massive big entities that are much more ancient. So if you have ever come to face entities and demons, you know what the difference is. If you're not quite sure, it's like entities is basically the lost soul. It's easy to to pick up you can feel them in the room they're just all around but demons they are much bigger much darker much more ancient much more potent and it's often uh, harder to actually you know notice them because it's so massive that they just come and they can just be in your field and, and create this huge level of distortion that you might not even be aware of uh, because you know we think it's like oh you know life is challenging or something wrong with me but they suck out a lot of our energy, these, these entities and demons. And so I was like, they're lying in bed with these pounding headaches. And as soon as I, you know, started calling in the ascended master straight away, I could feel that the ascended masters, they could not come that close to me because of this level of uh, interference. So I was like, of course, <laughs> of course, this is what's off. 
So I did not panic because I have years of training in that and I, I work with SecMet as well. And so I'm going to actually, I just want to let you know that since this experience happened yesterday, I had a very clear guidance about the next event and the next event, I just want to share this with you. It's yet to be uh, published uh, so you can book that in, but I really want you to book this in, uh, this event. Uh, I'm going to make it as cheap as possible for everyone to receive it because this is going to be learning how to clear entities and demons for ourselves as well as false light templates, false code, um, uh, outdated programs. So it would be like AI intelligence, also plugins, um, uh, negative alien implants and so and so on. So I would talk about all of that. We will do a clearing and I will teach you how to distinguish things and how to actually get rid of them for yourself and also for others, if that's something that you feel up to. So it will really also be amazing because that's uh, deeply empowering because I know that a lot of people that follow me, uh, they have interferences like that. It creates fear and therefore they shut off their intuition and psychic abilities because of course we don't want to face these kind of nasties and we are terrified by them but for me i'm not scared i've dealt with that since i was a little girl back then i was terrified i was terrified until my 20s until i started learning how to actually deal with them so to me it's easy still every now and then they can come especially here and i will tell you why especially here but then I always place myself as the angel and I'm an angel. So I know exactly how to handle them because I have learned and I have support from Sekhmet and so many more ascended masters, galactics and so on. So I will teach all of that in an event happening in May around the new moon. So stay in touch. More information will be shared very soon. So as I was there in the field, I did all that I needed to do and I cleared everything. I cleared everything. Then I was able to receive this beautiful activation from Kayara, uh, which is uh, the activation uh, wings up. So I worked with Mary Magdalene and the Ascended Masters to increase the power of my angelic wings and to connect more precisely with my star family through my angelic wings. That's a beautiful activation. Thank you, Kayara, for your service. And thank you to the Sophia Code and Ascended Master for being such a, um, a key uh, key in my in my life such a great support so i'm really i just want to express my gratitude to akira you see like uh, i teach a lot about spirituality but i receive a lot from kayara for example and to me at the moment she's the one of the most uh, enlightened person <laughs> amazing person amazing human i can receive from so this is why i'm continuing my curriculum with her and don't continue curriculums with other people than her at the moment. Uh, and so I was receiving from her and it was beautiful. And I fell asleep. I fell asleep and I slept for 11 hours straight without waking up with no dreams. And I woke up and I was just feeling, ah, I'm just back in my vortex. It's amazing. I checked the room, no one, nothing was there and so on. And I was, I was just laying in bed. I love to do that and I highly encourage you to do that. Like when you first to wake up, it's an excellent moment to connect with your intuition because the views between dimension is still very thin. So I ask my guides, okay, so tell me more about this. Like what's going on? What, need to, what do I need to know? And they I receive all of this information and this information uh, I'm, I want to share with you about the land of Bali and about many different places around the world. But this specifically here in Bali, it's the, um, the energy thing dump, energetic garbage dump of, of the world. So people come here to receive healing and to clear themselves and recharge themselves and have this kind of like eat, pray, love moment, you know, this epiphany. And so people from all over the world come here uh, with their trauma, their wounds and entities and demons that travel with them because most like... I don't want to scare anyone, but actually most people have entities on them. Like it's, yes, yeah, like, like pretty much everyone I would cross paths with, they would have entities on them. And you can be a light worker and, and be filled with entities. <laughs> like I was for two days filled with entities and it took me two days to realize and, and you know, I'm who I am, super psychic. I work like that. And so it, it's, it's a thing. So a lot, a lot of people have them. And so they come here in Bali and what they do is that they do all of these, like this clearing, this yoga, this breath work, they go to temples, they go, uh, they do ayahuasca ceremony, like a plant medicine ceremony, or like they, 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 they party, they do whatever they, they can here to kind of feel better. And that is not a bad thing. 
that is a great thing. They are literally like people come here because they are called to have a healing journey, to go on a healing journey. Let's continue doing that. That's amazing. There's nothing wrong with that. And the land of Bali is absolutely beautiful because here for Westerners, there's so many things in place. You know, it's literally the commodities here are insane. You can just live with very little money and have all of these massages and do all of these like having like semi luxurious to yeah, very luxurious lifestyle for not much. And so a lot of people come here and they just dumb things. And there is a lot of distortion around that because when you look at the the way westerners live here and the way locals live here it's like very distorted locals are very much trapped in enslavement metric system that they, they earn very little they work their ass off all day long they barely take a day off they don't really know what a day off is there is very high level of poverty and also the pollution the destruction of the environment is is huge there's just like trash everywhere in the sea, on the land. It's very, very sad, uh, like plastic all over. Um, hotels are not at all eco-friendly. Yes, you find, of course, some eco-friendly communities. Yes, 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 of course. And of course, there are lots of Westerners that give back to the land. It's not so much judgmental. It's like very much like the big, bigger, you know, like, like the generalization, okay? Generalization. Of course, you know, like not all Balinese suffer from enslavement matrix templates. Some of them are, are doing well and are, are very happy. And it's generally a, a happy population. You know, they're absolutely lovely. They are this like, I, I don't perceive, I feel very safe here. I don't perceive any violence. So there's like so much amazing, amazing things here. And also a lot of density, so much density. It's like, this is extremely dense. And this is what I felt from day one. And I thought, oh, it's because I'm not used to many people around me and so on. But it's actually the land struggles to deal with the amount of density that is present. So it's um, with the environment. It's the distortion around human connections with you have like on one side, you have the you know, like the Westerners that come with money and they build all of these things and they live that way and they really don't give back. Honestly, it's not because they live here that they give back. It's like energetically, they are like energetic vampires. And I know it's going to annoy so many people that I say that, but it's true. And I'm doing all of these things and I'm like, am I doing the same? Am I doing the same? So it's like I do as many prayers and great gratitude, you know, ceremonies for the land and so on. Just, you know, thanking the beautiful land of Bali, the environment, the population for being here. And I have the highest level of gratitude for that. But, you know, a lot of Westerners take, think, take it for granted. And yeah, like um, I've heard stories like <laughs> really outrageous about the way some Westerners believe like, let's do fucking better. Let's do better. OK, let's do better. So where, if you come to Bali, just tip tip people like insane. I tip people like insanely, you know, because they, they earn shit. They earn shit. And if they even like, I had some Westerners say, oh, you know, but you know, they don't need much. They don't need much like us. It's like, what the fuck is that? Oh yeah, they can, they are happy with leaving all of them in one room. I was like, what? <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> can you hear yourself talk right now? Oh, you see, I'm going, oh, I'm, I'm getting fiery here. So let's take a breath. When traveling like that, it is um, very easy to perceive things from our own views, from our own um, habits, our own culture, our own background, for also how you want to be, like how we want to be. Oh, I'm in Bali, I'm this spiritual person, I talk about chakras, I do plant medicine, you know, fuck money, and so like, it's like Come on, you know, and so many people come and they travel in these kind of places with all of these veils in place, the separation template, and also all of their density, their wounds, their trauma, and they just like dump everything here because they are on this healing journey. Great, but there is, it's very important when we go through clearings to open a portal to the earth and to Sophia God to God's source. It is very important that we call upon angelic armies to clear the field, to take the density that we release and to bring it back to where it comes from, or to be dissolved from the point of creation through multidimensional time and space realities all the way to this day. Because here, there are many portals that are open continuously with different dimensions. And now that we are coming closer to the Niepi, the portals are even more present, they are even more portals. So the bandwidth 
that we experience here in Bali at the moment is kind of stretched to the max. You have the highest light and you have the lowest of the lowest. And I can just feel it so strongly as I speak now. So we need to take responsibility when we do clearings of ourselves. We need to take responsibility by understanding how to do it properly. It's not because we do a, a clearing in Reiki that what we clear is just gone for good. It's just going to linger in the space around us. This is literally what happens here. You have all of these neo shamans and these healers and all of this new age community that come here. It's just like, oh, like we do all of this. Where does that go? It stays in the in between and it's trapped here. And yes, locals do ceremony. It's like, oh, yeah, but locals do a lot of ceremony. First of all, your shit being dumped around is very much like trash. If you throw the trash around, the plastic around, it's going to stay there. No one is going to pick it up, you know, like it's just going to stay in the ocean. It's going to stay in nature. You are responsible for your own trash. So when you do a clearing, when you clear yourself and you work with others, you are responsible for that trash. You are not allowed to leave that in the freaking in between, for goodness sake. And people don't know that. But it stays, this is what creates this huge level of um, density and this density increases the tension, the um, polarities. It's like you have this, this tiny land in Bali with this, yes, this clearing ceremony here and there, but it's much like peak traffic on a motorway. It's like there's just so many lost souls, demons and entities here that they, even if there is a light beam over there for clearing, they've got to wait a ticket for a while until they can go there. Yeah. So this is why I feel like this, like this in Bali because it's just so intense. And now, as I said, the energy is increasing and also local population, they have beautiful ceremonies and they pray a lot and so on, but it's also a very high level of superstition and fears. So there's lots of fears and superstition here. So when it comes to, um, you know, also dealing with different realms, different beings uh, present in different realms, they, it just, I, I wonder if they really know what's going on there because it just, every everything everywhere and now because there is this um march this uh, ceremony that's going to happen tomorrow where basically like they do the music and the process for the purpose of clearing the land now it's like you've got this electricity it's like the the demons and entities know that they are under watch you know so they are even more exacerbated and as i said this i can just i can just feel it so much it's kind of like woo, it's peak rising. So I'm going to prepare by doing more meditation than usual. I'm going to meditate more than usual. Um, I'm going to do all of these things. Also, I recently shared um, the collective monthly meditation here on my social on YouTube and Spotify. And I would love to invite you to do that because uh, that's literally a meditation for clearing our field, but also clearing the earth and clearing humanity. So wherever you are in the world, I would love to invite you to do this meditation a lot. And if you feel that you live in places where there is a lot of lost souls, do that often and regularly because it is part of our maintenance. We need to maintain our field. It's like we don't want to feel sweaty and dirty, so we take a shower. We don't want to have parasites, lost soul entities in our field, so we clear. We do the clearing. And with that meditation that I shared, this clearly portals opened through the earth and through the heavens, so the souls know exactly where to go. They are just not left, you know, like wandering around like that. I just want to, um, you know, to reaffirm here that um, none of this is actually judgmental. It's an observation, you know, it's an observation of, of how little uh, education there is on this subject, little understanding there is on this subject, and also an observation about the fact that now the, the bandwidth that we are experiencing in humanity is really, really increasing. I feel it in Bali, but we know that all around the world. I was talking to a friend who's traveling in Europe and she lives in Tasmania and she was saying that, you know, she can really feel like the density in Europe is like so intense for her. And um, this is what a lot of us feel. So if you live in a country that has had many wars, where there is a lot of poverty, where metric system is extremely you know, developed, uh, where there's like um, really 
really you can just feel density in the land as well like you need extra protection you need to clear yourself and at the moment at this stage in life it's happening pretty much all around the world because we need to be able to release this density these parasites these lost souls these entities and demons we need to um, help them uh, as much as possible to go away so they can be freed and they can go continue to create in their own realms and so the ones that are not interested in dealing with this kind of energy of lower realms we are freed from that also and this is part of also of the ascension process so this is why i'm also taking my responsibilities here and I want to educate on this subject because for a very long time I was like, no, I don't work with these realms. I don't work with all of that. And it's true. I don't work with these realms. But now I've had this like hum big humility pill into saying, well, this is also part of your responsibility. So are you going to continue to deny the fact that you could help people because you just don't want to deal with that? Or are you going to step up uh, as a role, as your role as a leader and actually educate people and train people on how to to basically work with Sekhmet, uh, the, the Egyptian goddess, the lioness, uh, and help people to you know, know how to clear themselves, how to protect their own body and energy field, but also the ones of their family. So you can do that with your children, you can do that with your, um, your friends, if they give you, you know, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, um, a yes, a clear yes. And you can also do that with your home and where you travel, you can do that as well for the land. And you can do that uh, at home as well, of course, for the land and expand that to humanity. Because uh, if, if like me, you, come across these kind of uh, beings every now and then, even if it's rare, it means that there is a need for you to address that. And by trying to ignore it, it's actually denying something that is unfolding and that we need to be doing to solve. And yes, we can also do that uh, momentarily. Like for me, I am not interested in giving clearing sessions to everyone. In, in teaching around that, in, in dealing with entities. This is not what I'm saying. I'm not gonna go and start developing all sorts of things around that. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna do this one event at the moment that feels aligned. And later on, as part of other this other program that is built, being birthed through me at the moment, that will be a revolutionary one-year program, I will teach in depth about that because this is very important. This is part of the dynamics present in humanity. It's always been the case. And now more than ever, we need light workers to know exactly exactly what they're doing, um, when they do a session, maybe like Reiki or healing session, um, plant medicine journey and so on, um, you know, uh, sage, feathers, not enough, guys, not enough, okay, songs, not enough. We need more than that. <laughs> it's okay. Because the things that we're dealing with is like, yeah, the sage and the, and the feathers and the songs, they are going to shush them away from the field. But it's very much like you dump your trash in the neighbor's garden and you say, oh, it's gone. It's not my problem any longer. Let's not do that. Okay. So I'm going to teach in depth with that during an event coming in the month of May, around the new moon of May. And I would love to invite you to join. We will put the link below as soon as the landing page is ready. And in the meantime, stay happy, keep doing your protection, your prayers, feel grateful and always, always connect to your column of ascension, your pillar of light, because the more you do that, the harder it is for lower realm frequencies to get attached to you. I send you lots of love and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.